Okay. And let's get see if my whiteboard is still set up. No, it isn't. <laughs> Look at that. All that I did to set this up and it completely undoes itself for no reason at all that I know of. So here we go again. You can't see it, but I'm moving these taskbars so I can write on the whiteboard. They're supposed to be... Oh, the whiteboard stayed where it belonged. Okay, so that's good. All right, we're finally in the sauce now 15 minutes late sorry about that um, now my first question to you and since you're the only one in the room were you ever able to find the student course evaluations or the, what they call the surveys I forgot to look. oh okay okay so uh, try looking under your a email account the a, a number email account that would be my best guess I've been telling everybody else in the classes since yesterday that's where to go to look okay because I was hoping you had found them there so I was just trying to find out if that was telling them the right thing okay um, so I think you've heard all this before so let me say it quickly um, and, and it's mostly for the others who aren't here hopefully they'll listen to this on YouTube videos uh, <coughs> sorry. Number one, it's due to student course evaluations. Okay, I think you find them through your A number email account uh, because you said you had checked your other two, didn't you, Kira? Yes. Okay. Was it personal account and your old? Um, K Dudley, uh, yeah, K Dudley at uh, students dot you know, all that kind of stuff. Yes. Okay, that's the one where you couldn't find it, right? Right. Okay. Okay. So since you couldn't find them there, my guess is they must be sending them only to the A stuff. Okay. Now it was a different person sending them. So that may be why they sent them to a different place. I went back and checked yesterday and saw it didn't come from the dean who it usually comes from. It came from Miss Glass, who's the IT person. So she may have only been using the A email address rather than all of them. Okay. So please do the student course evaluations. And Again, this may not pertain to you because I think you've done most of this. If you haven't turned in the research paper, today is the last day to turn it in and not lose points. If I receive it tomorrow or later, you start losing points. So please get it in today if you possibly can. If you can't get it in today, get it as soon as you can to me. Okay? So please do that. If you haven't turned in all of your back tests, we've had chapter one test, chapter two test, chapter three test, three tests so far, and we're in chapter four, that will be your final exam. Okay, so get those first three tests into me. And Kira, I printed several of yours yesterday, I believe, so uh, thanks for that. Um, and at the Sometime after the end of class today, I'll be posting your final exam. I just don't know how far we're going to get today to tell you how many questions to answer. I've got it prepared, but i got more questions, I think, than what we'll get to today. So I'll show that to you uh, at the end of class today. And that's one of the things that takes a little longer. But sometime between 1 and 3, probably a little closer to 3, I'll be able to post that test. Now, let me answer some questions that y'all may not have, but other classes have had them. Number one, where do you submit things? Okay, I've been saying all term. Uh, there's one of three possibilities here. Email, attachment to an email, perfectly fine. Attachment to a Blackboard message, perfectly fine. Okay? The third option varies from whatever it is you're doing. Um, under week 15, 
I believe, I hope, that I put there instead of a class, a week 15 assessment, I think that's where I put the research paper. Uh, that you can go to that site and submit it through that site. Now, I don't know why you would want to do that unless in other classes that's how you submit everything and you're used to submitting. And if you so, it's there and you can do it. At least I hope it's there. I meant to put it there. I hope I did. Uh, but if you can't find it there or if you don't want to go through that hassle, either attach it to an email or send it to me on, uh, attach it to a Blackboard message. Now, your individual test, I usually, the week that I gave those out, if I didn't post them under that week, at least I had that test as a tab in that week. You can turn them back in that way too, if you choose. Again, it seems like to me that's more effort on your part. All you have to do is attach it to an email or attach it to a Blackboard message. But if you find that you prefer to do it at the place where I did it, the week you know, where I assigned test one or test two or test three. If I did that, if I left a place there, that's where it is. Now the final exam, if I didn't do it already, in the last class I didn't, I thought I had, uh, after the weekly set of uh, activities, then after that there's another couple tabs on the content page and one of the last ones says exams midterm and final. Now we didn't have a midterm exam per se, so that's, you know, sort of useless, but there was a tab in there for final exam. Now if, if I did it, and I hope I did, but if I didn't get it done, I'll get it done. I'll set that up so you can submit that. Now right now, or originally, that was hidden from students. If I did it, you can see it. If you can't see it, that means I haven't done it yet. I'll try to do that between 1 and 3 also today. Uh, and that's where I'll put the uh, final exam. I'll put it always on Blackboard messages, but I'll also put it there if they gave me the little plus to do it. Sometimes they left off the little plus and there's no way I can attach it there. And that may be true of your earlier test too. Uh, but if I set up a thing for it but didn't put the test there, uh, if I set up the thing for it, you can always submit your test there. So you have usually three ways to turn in anything. Attach it to an email, attach it to a Blackboard message, or uh, send it through Blackboard under the week activity where you see it, or for the final exam there. And the uh, research paper will be under week 15, that's the week we're in now. If I set it up that way, you can turn it in that way too. So any questions? All right. Where we left off last time was is chapter 4, vector spaces, 4.3, uh, subspaces of vector spaces, page 171. Okay. And we had just talked about for lines in a plane, okay? Lines in a plane. We're talking about Rn, subspaces of Rn. And for lines in a plane, you have, now I won't go over this again, but it's on page 171, a W, which is your subspace, uh, it is a subspace, it, okay, W is a subset. It is a subspace if it consists of a single point, but that point has to be the origin, zero, zero. Can't be any other point and be a subspace because you always have to have a zero vector. So if that's all you got, that's it, okay? Or W can consist of all the points and, um, on a line that passes through the origin, okay? Now, we're talking about R2 now, R2. Any line that passes through the origin has to pass through the origin. If it passes through the origin, that's the subspace, okay? And then the third one, all points in R2, 
all points in R2. Okay. Now, I was contemplating whether I ought to write this. What I think I'll do, I'll just hold it up for you and show you. Okay. Um, I just have the first one doesn't really pertain to what we're doing. It's just showing you a unit circle, which is a great thing to have, right? But guess what? That's not, it is a subset of R2, but it's not a subspace of R2. And the main reason it's not a subspace, or one of the reasons, it doesn't contain the zero vector. I mean, the zero is in the middle of the circle, but it's not on the circle. Okay, so that would be one reason. The second reason, what if you added this vector on the circle to that vector on the circle? You'd have a vector here that's not on the circle. Okay, so there's another reason. The addition doesn't work. Now, to be a subspace, that's certainly a subset, but not a subspace, it would have to be either just the origin or any line that passes through the origin, that's the second figure there, or the whole plane. One of those three options, it's got to be one and only one of those three options. Okay? The origin, a line through the origin, or the entire plane. Okay? Now, oh, that's why example seven. I thought, why in the world do they have the unit circle there? Because that's example seven at the bottom of page 171. Show that the subset of R2 consisting of all the points x squared plus y squared uh, equal one is not a subspace. And that we just did. Okay. There is a circle x squared plus y squared is equal one. It's a unit circle. It's certainly a subspace of R2, but it's not a subspace. It's a subset of R2, but not a subspace. Number one, <laughs> what dead giveaway, it doesn't include the origin. Number two, uh, any vector on that, add them together, two vectors on that, add them together, you'll usually not be on the unit circle. Okay? And even your scalar multiple doesn't work either. Take either one of those, multiply it by any C not equal to 1 or minus 1, and you won't be on the circle either. So therefore, unit circle, not a subspace. The scalar addition, I mean, vector addition is not closed on that subspace. Scalar multiplication is not closed on that su subset. And the unit and the zero vector doesn't exist in there. Okay, um, they gave the example of adding one zero and zero one. You get one one, and that's not on the uh, unit circle. All right, let's move to example eight. This is on page one seventy two. Now this one you can see at LarsonLinearAlgebra.com. You can see an interactive version of this type of an example. Determine whether each of these subsets is a subspace of R3. Okay, R3. Now we're dealing with R3 now. Here's W. This is a subset of R3 equal to the set of all ordered triplets x sub 1, x sub 2. I have to write really slowly or this pen goes nuts these days. Okay, x3. <coughs> no, 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 no. I got ahead of myself. I wasn't. This third one is the vector, I mean the component 1. Okay, such that x1 and x2 are real numbers. That stands for the real number system. All right. Now the question is, is that 
that is a subset of R3 for sure. Okay. The question is, is it a subspace of R3? And do you have an answer? Well, if your answer was no to the first question, that would be right. If you have an answer no to the second question, that, well, never mind. Okay. So the answer is no. And I can think of, well, <laughs> I can think of at least three reasons why it can't be. Okay. Remember, to be a subspace, the, the vector addition must be closed in the space. Scalar multiplication must be closed in the space. And then just a little aside, it must contain the zero vector. And all three of these fail. If you were to add uh, any vector x1, x2, 1, that's n, w, and add to that some other vector, let's call it y1, comma, y2, comma, 1, add them together, you get a vector that's x1 plus y1. And that certainly, if both of these were in this space, real numbers, x1 plus y1 is a real number. x2 plus y2 is a real number. So that would be fine. But 1 plus 1 is 2. And 2 to be in this subset, the third element has to be a 1. It can't be a 2. So this is not closed under vector addition. It's not closed under scalar multiplication. Pick a C, any C other than 1. Any C other than 1. And multiply it by x1, x2, one and you'll get cx1 perfectly fine that's in the space cx2 perfectly fine that's in the space c not fine because c is not one if c is not one that doesn't work it does not work and of course the other thing the most obvious thing when you first look at it the zero vector is not in that space because the zero vector in R3 would be 0, 0, 0. And 0, 0, 0 is not there because that third element, third component is a 1. Okay? So that's not in the space. Now, the second of these is W is equal to the set of all uh, order triplets such that x1 comma x1 plus x3 comma x3 this is supposed to be in parentheses such that uh, x1 and x2 are real numbers, uh, x1 and x3 are real numbers, x1 and x3 are real numbers. Okay, now the question is, is that um, in um, is that a subspace? It certainly is a subset. Okay. And all that's required is x1 and x3 be real numbers. Well, automatically, you know, x1 plus x3 will be a real number. Okay. Uh, it's just not every real number will, can fit the bill here. But, well, I don't know. I don't want to say that. I think it, it could. Uh, if you were to add... 
x1 plus y1 to it, that's a real number. x3 plus y3 would be a real number. And x1 plus y1 plus x3 plus y3, that would be a real number. And it would be the sum of those two. So that works. Scalar multiplication. Uh, C x1 would be a real number, so that would be fine. Cx3 would be a real number, that's fine. And the middle one would be Cx1 plus Cx3. <laughs> and that would be C times x1 plus x3. Yes, that works too. And for x1 and x3, all that's required would be any real number. That includes 0, 0, and 0 plus 0 is 0, so the 0 vector is included. So yes, this one is a vector space, a subspace, okay? This one, not a subspace, okay? Because both vector addition, scalar multiplication, and zero vector being in it doesn't happen okay usually if the zero vector is not there that's the easiest thing to check and just go on from there now notice in example eight uh, note that the graph of each subset is a plane in r3 uh, Now, yeah, both both of those stuff. That's what they're talking about. I was trying to figure out this. I'm not going to draw the graph, okay? Please, okay? They've got it in the book. If you've got your book, you can see it. There's that first one, x1, x2, 1. That means z is always 1. Go up from the y, x, y plane one unit up and that plane that you get there is a plane that's what they were saying on that second one you got x1 and x3 are any values whatsoever and then the sum of x1 plus x3 is actually kind of a diagonal plane coming out of that now this is even with them drawing it the way they should be if i were trying to draw this it would be nuts, but with them drawing, it's still hard to see the orientation of that. But that also forms a plane, okay? Uh, the y value, the, the middle value, is a sum of x and z, okay? And when z is equal to 0, you're strictly on the x-axis and you're in the bisecting line there. Uh, and anywhere else, it's in a plane. Now, I can't prove that to you, okay? But it is true, okay? Now, what would be an acceptable subspace? The only acceptable subspaces, okay? If this is of R3, subspaces of R3, okay? If W was just the zero vector, and that's all, that is a subspace of R3. Trivial, but true. Single point, zero, zero, zero. Or any line that goes through the origin. See, the origin always has to be there. Uh, the origin, okay? Or any plane that goes, goodness gracious, this pen is terrible. 
through the origin, okay? Or the whole space. Okay, so it's either you just stepped it up one notch from what it was for R2. R2 was either the origin, a line through the origin, or the whole plane. For space, R3, it's either the origin, a line through the origin, a plane through the origin, or all the space of R3. Those are the only subspaces of R3. Okay, now what they haven't done, but what you could do, you go on up from there, except you run out of words <laughs> and descriptors for it, really. Okay, if you were in R4, the only subspaces for R4 would be the origin of R4, whatever that is. I can't draw it, okay, but it, zero, 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 zero. And then any one-dimensional line that goes through that origin, any two-dimensional plane that goes through the origin, and any three-dimensional space that contains the origin, okay? Or all of R4. So you just keep climbing like that every time. Now, there is a little digital algebra applied here like there is in most sections. And... Uh, I'm so sorry, and I don't have any um, caffeine up here. I'm running out of energy. This anemia is just knocking me over. Um, this is not fair to do, but the only closest thing I've got to something is a piece of um, pecan meat, so I'm going to eat that. Sorry. So sorry, but there's no caffeine in it, but at least it's got a little bit of sugar. Sorry. So, the linear algebra applied is talking about digital signal processing, and it depends on a sampling um, algorithm you might say and <clears throat> it's a, a little on the heady side so read that if that's a, something of interest to you you might want to follow that up it may be that's what direction you want to take in your engineering I don't know go for it homework exercises that finishes 4.3 any questions on 4.3 Homework exercises here would include any of the odds 1 through 5. They're all found at calcchat.com. Any of the odds 7 through 19. All found at calcchat.com. Any of the odds 21 to 27. All at calcchat.com. Any of the odds 29 through 35. All found at calcchat.com. Any of the odds 37 to 41, all found at calcchat.com. There's a true false 43, has three parts to it. That answer should be, or those answers should be found at calcchat.com. Then any of the odds 45 through 59, they should all be at calcchat.com. Okay, now. Okay, we go to 12.45, right? Okay. <clears throat> I'm getting all my... You would think this late in the term, I'd know all these times, but they sometimes sneak up and scare me. Okay, 12 11.30 to 12.45. Okay. Let's start on section 4.4. Uh, the title is Spanning Sets and Linear 
independence. Okay, I know you're in differential equation and we're talking about linear independence there as well. Okay, so that must be a fairly important concept. And certainly in linear algebra, it is very important. So what our objectives here are to write a linear combination of a set of vectors in a vector space V. Then once we do that, we'll determine whether a set S of vectors in that vector space is a spanning set of V. Now, that was in the title. Is here in the second objective must be an important concept I hope we get there okay number three determine whether a set of vectors in a vector space V is linearly independent or not okay so let's first look at linear combinations of vectors in a vector space this section begins to develop the procedures for representing each vector in a vector space as a linear combination of a select number of vectors in that space. Okay, so here's a definition. And this has so many subscripts in it, I'm going to have to write it out uh, mostly for. Whoa, that's right. What I was looking for. This one is what I'm looking for. Okay, I hope I didn't do anything dumb by that last one that I did. Okay, need my thing. Uh, I think you have a book, but I'm not sure the other two do. So here we have a vector I have to write so slowly with this to get it to write. A vector V. Time out. Remember in this chapter, and from now on, a vector doesn't mean a directed line segment. I know in the last couple, the last section, we were only dealing, the last part of that section, we're only dealing with Rn, which were traditional vectors, directed line segments in some sort of a space. Now we're talking about the global form of a vector. It can be a polynomial, it can be a function, it can be a matrix, it can be, I don't want to say just about anything, but a whole variety of things. So a vector V in a vector space, capital V, is, this isn't writing well, a combination I'm sorry, a linear combination. I left off the key word here. Linear combination of the vectors Yuck! It erased my whole word. U1 Now, this isn't necessarily a unit vector. I started to make it one, but it's not necessarily. U2, U3, dot, 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 all the way up to and including U sub K. They change the subscripts every now and then. In that vector space V, okay, when this vector V will be a linear combination of those vectors U, when V, whatever that is, remember it doesn't have to be a directed line segment, can be written of the form. In the form V 
is equal to sum C1 times U1 plus sum C2 times U2 yuck plus sum C3 times U3 plus dot 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 keep adding them up until you get to some CK times UK. It's not United Kingdom. Okay. Where your C's C1 C2 C3 and so on dot 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 up to and including C sub K are scalars. So far we're only letting scalars be real numbers. Any real number in the world. Okay? Now, that's what we mean by a linear combination. Okay? Uh, that you can find those k scalars that vector v can be written as a combination of the others. Now, uh, that's a sort of generic definition. We're not saying anything special. We don't say that v must be able to do. It's just saying vector v is a linear combination of those other vectors when it can be written in this form. Okay, not saying anything special about the V or anything special about the U's, but it, it V is a linear combination of those U vectors if it can be written as a sum of scalar multiples of those vectors. Okay, that's all. Okay, often one or more of the vectors in the set can be written as a linear combination of other vectors and we will look at example one there. So I think I'm going to erase the slide so I have more room to write <coughs> and let's do example one. Okay. For the set of vectors in R3, so these vectors are uh, I'm just going to say V in R3. Three dimensional vectors. Here's a set. S is a set of vectors. And this set of vectors consists of three vectors. 1, 3, 1. Zero, one, two, and one, zero, negative five. Okay. And they named these three vectors. They'll name this one vector V one this one vector v2 and this one vector v3 okay just to give them names now what they're saying here is vector v1 is a linear combination of v2 and v3 Okay, and here's the reason. Let's write it down. One, three, one can be written as some linear combination C1 times, or you want to call it C2? What should they call it? Oh, they don't. <laughs> okay. Um, 
let's just uh, make it easier to keep to up with it. Let's call it C2 times 0, 1, 2 plus C3 times 1, 0, negative 5. Now, it's sort of obvious to me just looking at this. Now, we could do it through in gory detail, but this one will be fairly easy because you see the middle element here of this is a 3. This has a 1 here and a 0 there, so that means that C2 must be 3. Has to be 3. Okay, and similarly, that this is a 1, that's a 0, this is a 1, so that says C3 has to be 1. So this is saying it's 3 times 0, 1, 2, plus 1 times 1, 0, negative 5. Now, if this doesn't work, it's not a linear combination. So let's see what we got here. This will be 0, 3, 6, plus 1, 0, negative 5. And when you add those three together, those two together, you get a 1, 3, 1. And that, sure enough, is what you got here. Now, I don't know what that noise was. Do you? I don't see anybody else coming in. And maybe you couldn't hear the noise, but it was a loud ding. Okay. All right. Excuse me just a minute. I need a drink of water. I think that's part of my problem. My first two classes, at the end of class, they had, both classes had so many questions that I went right up until the next class to do. So I barely had time just to go to the restroom and I didn't. Uh, maybe one time I stopped and just got a sip of water, but I didn't get enough to do. <clears throat> I think I'm a little dehydrated too, which doesn't help anything. But anyway, so you see this is with C2 equal 3, C1, C3 equal 1. Yep. The first vector, V1, was a linear combination of the other two. Now these subscripts here mean almost nothing. Okay, the only reason I put them that way is that we called this one vector 2 and that one vector 3. That was to identify the vectors. So just to keep from getting confused, I call this C2 and C3. You could have called it anything you wanted to, but they just numbers. All right, so there was <coughs> example 1A. All right, now remember, remember, Vectors are not just directed line segments. They can be, for instance, matrices. Okay, and here's a set of vectors. M, N, M22. Okay. Um, where that means a matrix of two rows, two columns. Here's your set. The first matrix in here is 0, 8, 2, 1. Second vector in here <coughs> is 0, 2, 1, 0. Third vector in here is negative 1, 3, one, two. 
fourth vector in here is negative 2, 0, 1, 3. There is your set of vectors. Now, I hate to do this, especially since we only have 15 minutes left, but I have just been getting colder and colder and colder. Part of that is the anemia, I'm realizing, but another part is the sun has gone to the south side of the house and not showing in any of the windows here, so this room's getting kill it, chillier. Let me run out and turn on up the thermostat one degree. I'll be right back. One of the worst things about this anemia is uh, the coldness. Okay, I, uh, my wife used to say, anytime she touched my hand, she said, "Your hands are always so warm," because I had good metabolism and that kind of stuff. Boy, since this has hit, there are sometimes my fingers felt like they were going to fall off. And I'm just not used to those feelings unless I'm really in cold, cold temperatures. But it's 68 in this room, and my fingers are, my hands are just so cold. <clears throat> I'm not used to it. Okay. And by the way, they called this vector V1. Remember, these can be vectors. They don't have to be directed line segments. This is vector V2. Goodness gracious, the thing is such a pain in the neck. Vector V2. This is vector V3. And this is vector V4. Okay. <clears throat> and they say that vector V1 is a linear combination. of vector V2, V3, and V4. Okay. Now, they just pop up some numbers and tell you. Let's see if there's any way we can make that happen. Well, let's do the same thing we did before. Let's look at this element here. In V1, 0. Well, there's already a 0 in V2, and there's a minus 1 here and a minus 2 here. So for this, all those to add to be that, you would have to multiply V3 by a 2. Okay, so let me write this. V1, this is what linear combination means, equal to C2 v2, I just am sticking with that, plus c3, v3, plus c4, v4. Okay, and for that to be true, it looks like to me v3 would have to be positive 2. That way you would have a minus 2 plus 2 times that would be <clears throat> plus a negative, negative uh, plus 2, uh, 0 to equal 0. So just from that first observation, C3 must be negative 2, we said. Okay. Now let's go to another one. Now these are easy because of the zeros in here. Okay. 
This 8 has to be some linear combination of these. We already know C3 has to be a negative 2, so that's got to be, that would produce here a minus 6, and for that to be 8, uh, this would have to be a minus 2. No. Wait a minute. A fourth, uh, seven. So I think C2 would have to equal seven. Let's see if that works. Seven times this is 14 minus six. Yep, would be eight. Okay. Now let's go to the next one. Uh, again, I like to pick out the zeros. That makes it a little easier. So this must be, this one here must be 0 plus something, and, and this is a, remember, minus 2, <clears throat> so it would be 0 minus 4 plus 3. So I think that's going to have to be a 1. C4 equal 1. Now there is another way to do this, and I kept thinking I would have to show it to you, but this is so much easier to do it this way. So let's see if that works. 7 times 0, 8, 2, 1. Oh, oh wait, 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 wrong one. Wrong, 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 wrong. I was writing the wrong vector in here. 0, 2, 1, 0. minus 2 times negative 1, 3, 1, 2. Plus 1 times negative 2, 0, 1, 3. All right, let's see what we get. 7 times 0 is 7. That would be a plus 2 minus 2. That would give us a, well, let's write it here. A 0. Okay. We can lose this one, I think. Okay. <clears throat> 7 times 2 is 14 minus 6 is 8 plus 0 is 8. We knew that would work. This is the one that's going to tell us. Okay? 7 times 1 is 7. Minus 2 would be 5. Plus 1 would be, oh boy, 7 minus 2 would be 5. Plus 1 would be 6. Blew that one, didn't we? Okay. And the reason was there's too many variables. I was just hoping they would all have to pan out. They don't. So let me show you how to do it more in an organized fashion. I was hoping that would just gonna be easy. It wasn't. <clears throat> Actually, I wish I hadn't erased that. Okay. The first part, yes. Well, part of it, yes. All right. How are we doing on time? We barely are going to have time to finish this. Okay. 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 All right. <clears throat> we want V1. In fact, I think I'll write what V1 is. Yuck, come on. Okay. We want 0, 8, 2, 1 to equal some, oh, 
Let's erase these by all means. Okay. C2 times 0, 2, 1, 0 plus C3 times that. Well, let me make sure I did that right. Yep, that's right. Plus C4 times that. So here's what we do. Do what it tells us to. Okay. Zero times C2 is not going to be anything. Uh, so zero minus one C3 minus two C4 has to equal zero. This one would be 2C2, that's from here, plus 3C3, plus 0, that's equal to 8. Next, I think that's a 1, C2 plus 0. C2 plus C3 plus C4 is equal to 2. Now you see what we're doing. We're multiplying each element, this, the corresponding elements together by their coefficients and setting them equal to the corresponding element over here. The last one here would be 0C2, and that would be plus 2C3 plus 3C4, and that has to equal 1. Okay. Now, what we've got here is this. Set up a matrix. Didn't you know that was coming? Okay, 0, minus 1, minus 2, 0, 0. 2, 3, 0. Why do I have more too many things in here? I don't know where that came from. Let me just erase that last one. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, this was eight. One, 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 two, and zero, two. Three, one. Okay. Now, there's a matrix. Okay. We have two minutes to solve that matrix. Let's just do what we can in the short time that we have. Okay. First thing I would do is move this row to the top. Okay. You could exchange the two rows. That would be fine. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I don't have enough room to do anything. So since this is the very end, I'm going to go on a race. We're not going to finish it anyway. So let me just erase the stuff at the top. Okay. Now, the fact this is a 4x4 four four has nothing to, well, very little to do when we're dealing with 2x2 two two matrices, except you had four elements in them, so that's going to give you four 
uh, things here, but one's a linear combination, so anyway, it does. So here would be the first matrix here. Ooh, this is ugly. One, 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 two. Okay, next two, three, zero, eight. Zero, minus one, minus one, minus two, zero. And the last one is zero, two, three, one. Okay. Now we're going to run out of time. In fact, we're out of time. If you proceed to do this, of course, the next one would be minus two times row one, added to row two, you wind up with what you want. You'll get across, and if indeed everything works, somewhere along the way, a bottom row or a row is going to turn out to be all zeros, and you'll have an identity matrix here, and then whatever that is, you'll have your answers there. Now, they didn't do the work for you. They just said, Behold, this works. If you put in uh, a 1, 2, negative 1. Okay? There's no reason to be able to pick numbers like that. You had to do the work. We didn't have time to do the work, but there it is. Um, and that was example 1. Really, we didn't get far enough along for you to do much of anything for homework. This is a really, really long section. So if you did want to do any homework, uh, you could do one or three. They're both at calcchat.com. Uh, you could do five or seven. They're both at calcchat.com. And that's about as far as you could do. Sorry we didn't get any further, but we are out of time. So let me show you now what your final is going to look like. Okay, um, no, it's here, two thirty-seven. Okay, I think this will be test four. Yeah. Okay probably not the best okay you can certainly do number one that was from 4.1 okay number two I think was also from 4.1 okay um, I think you can do number three based on what we were just doing 4.4 um, I mean Number four you can do, uh, five you can do, yeah, five and six have the same instructions here, there is a subset for five, here's a subset for six, okay, now seven you can't do. Uh, 7a you can't do because we didn't do spanning but here's the set s and no we didn't do linear independence either okay so you can't do seven or eight so basically all you got is one through six okay let me just see if anything else is down here no one through six that's all folks sorry about that Okay, um, let's see if I can get them all on one page. And you see that's, it's not quite as bad as what it seems because you have blanks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you do have 10 things to answer. It shouldn't take you very long to do that. Okay. These I think are very easy. So be careful with them. Get those right. This one. Yep. You can do that. That's pretty easy too. Um, um, 
and number three was sort of what we were doing today so I think you could based on that do it uh, and but we also did it back earlier as well and then uh, four I think is pretty easy and uh, straightforward and five uh, <coughs> I'm so sorry <coughs> This is what we're just doing in 4.3. 5 and 6 were there. So hopefully you can get all those done without being a huge stress, okay? Because it's really short, really goes right with what we were doing. Any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. You can't see those, can you? Sorry about that. Here they are. 1 through 6, okay? So let me back back up and show you 1 through 6. I can't get all of six on there. the answer line it's missing but there's one pretty straightforward two very straightforward three I'm pretty sure one and two are from section 4.1 three and four are from 4.2 and five and six are from 4.3 okay uh, though what we were doing so far in 4.4 also helps you to do this one so I think you can can handle all right, any questions? Now, you have until any time next week to finish these. Try to get them done by Thursday if you can. That way I don't have everything to grade on Friday uh, or in, on the weekend. So try to get them done by Thursday. If you can get them done earlier, get them to me earlier. The sooner I can get them, the sooner I can get them printed and and start grading and stuff like this. Right now, the printing is almost taking me longer than the grading, okay? Uh, I'm just swamped with, I have people from my first mini-term class still turning stuff in, and I have people from my second mini-term class, uh, which had, I think we're up to 12 labs, five tests, and I have some people who are turning in the very first work. And so I'm getting swamped with a bunch of junk, a bunch of stuff that I, it, it's going to be a, a rough two weeks, you know, trying to get everything ready. So get me as much as you can, as early as you can, as you've been doing. So please continue it. Any questions? All right. Enjoyed having you in class. I'll say it to the other two guys, too, hoping you'll listen to this at some point. It was great having y'all, too. Don't know what happened at the end. I guess your job's got in the way. But uh, please get me your work. Any that you haven't gotten me so far, research papers are due today. And pass tests, get me as soon as possible. And here's your final, one through six. Uh, yeah, one through six. That's all you have to do. Now, if you can do seven or eight or nine, then by all means do them. <clears throat> uh, if you get them right, there'll be bonus. If you get them wrong or leave them blank, nothing, nothing will be taken off. Okay? So that way they can only help you. Or you can ignore them co completely. Any questions? All right, please do the pseudo course evaluations. And I wish you the very best in your going off to the next phase of your education, wherever you happen to be heading. Hope you do well. You know how to get in touch with me during the month of January. I'll, in early February, probably, I'll still have my email address. After that, I'll go to my personal. So if you do think you need to or are going to want to get in touch with me, please email me sometime. I'll give you my uh, Gmail address. I just don't know what it is now. I know... Most of it, but I don't want to give you a wrong thing. I've got to look that up. I never use it. My wife set it up for me. She told me what it was. It's either Fowler Charles 01 or Fowler Charles 1 or something like that. Um, and I'll have to check and see. But email me sometime in the month of January and I'll get you that if you think you do need to. And please get in touch if you need for your upper level, you've done just about everything we've done here, at, you know, have to offer here at Lawson. But if there is anything I can help you with, let me know. Take care. Be safe.
don't relax your guard. This virus is almost out of control. Be careful. Take care. Keep in touch. Bye-bye.